are on the judging of the toy group. But first, please welcome to take us into the judging of the utility group, Jenny Shora. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. And as we said, we're at the climax of this third day's judging here at Crufts 2022. The two groups to be judged this evening provide two more of the seven finalists to compete for best in show here tomorrow evening. The first group to be judged this evening is the utility group, and it's my pleasure to introduce our group judge. He has a lifetime experience in exhibiting and breeding dogs, starting in obedience when he was 13, and he's synonymous with Chow Chow, his Taumina affix was established in 1965. Hello and a very warm welcome to the first of our two groups to be judged here on day three of Crufts 2022. Now we're about to find out which dog from the utility group will be joining Akella, the Siberian Husky, Lenore, the Border Collie, Donnie, the Irish Terrier, and Aya, the Greyhound, in best in show tomorrow night. Now I'm joined here in the commentary box by international judge Frank Kane, who actually judged best in show here in 2012. Frank, and our judge is coming in now. And here's our judge, Rodney Oldham, a very experienced judge, started his career in dogs with Chow Chows. He was very successful, now, has expanded his judging portfolio and judges many breeds now. And the first of the dogs coming in now is the Akita. A little Boston, an American breed. Followed by that iconic British breed, the Bulldog. And big cheers for the Bulldog. Now we have the Canaan Dog, best of breed. Rather Canaan Dog there, national dog of Israel. And our Chow Chow. Now here is the Chow Chow, the breed which made uh, Rodney famous in the dog world. Now please welcome Instantly recognisable, well, here we have our Dalmatian best of breed. Followed by the Eurasia. Here's the Eurasia, a breed developed in Germany. And the French Bulldog best of breed coming Hugely in. Hugely popular, now. here we have the French Bulldog. Dog of the moment, now the biggest registrations for the Kennel Club system is the French now Bulldog. Now the German Spitz Klein. Two German Spits come in now, the smaller size coming in first. Followed by the German Spits. Closely Mittel. followed by the Mittel, the larger variety. And now the Japanese Akita Inu. Another of the Japanese breeds now, the Akita Inu. The original Akita, isn't it? And Frank? the Japanese yes. and Shiba Inu. And here's another one on a smaller scale, the Shiba Inu. And our best of breed, and another Japanese, Japanese breed. Here we have the Spitz. Beautiful white coat, sharp contrast with the black pigment there of the mouth, Followed eyes, and nose. Followed by the Kazond. Kazond from Holland. A beautiful that colour. That looks really smart, doesn't beautiful it? Beautiful colours. Best of breed, Another Dutch breed now, the Koiko Honji. Was once in the gun dog group, wasn't it, Frank? Now yes. we have the Laza Apso. <laughs> uh, from Tibet, the, the Laza Apso. Followed by the miniature Schnauzer. The miniature Schnauzer here. It's the smallest of the Schnauzer varieties. And looking Three. as smart the as paint the there. Is the miniature poodle. Frank, I believe you may have put this one through, and I believe you may Follow share your name. <laughs> yes, it is. <yes. laughs> and here's the, the largest of the poodles, the standard poodle. Really striding out. And then the smallest, the toy, little apricot there. And look at this, look at the style on this. Look at that. <laughs> Followed by the Skippy. Uh, the Skippy Key, the Belgian barge dog. Now we just saw the miniature Schnauzer. Here we have the standard Schnauzer, the original variety of the breed. Our best of breed, Sarpe. The Chinese Sarpe. Very striking outfit and there as well. Best of breed, Shih Tzu. The Shih Tzu coming in next, another Tibetan breed. And lovely carriage, its tail and over its, its back. Spaniel now coming into the ring. 
A famous dog coming in now, the Tibetan Spaniel. Big winner, this one, isn't it? Followed by, our Followed by another Tibetan, Tibetan breed, this one, the Tibetan Terrier. Closely related to the Lhasa Apso, many similar qualities. And representing the imported breed register for the utility group is the Sholowitz Squintly. And here's the one with the most difficult name, it's the Sholowitz Squintly. It used to be called the Mexican Hairless, which was a lot simpler, but this is the breed, the Sholowitz Squintly. We'll let you take that one, Frank. <laughs> well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. So our judge now is going to have his first look at the be best of breeds in this utility group. Utility and Frank, the utility group, they really are all shapes and sizes and purposes, awesome. aren't they? Yes, they, of course, there are many of the breeds that they're, they're now redundant from their original function, but now they're usually household companions. And some of them are some of the oldest documented breeds, aren't they? Dating back thousands of years. Of course, the Tibetan breeds as well. Yes, very old. With breeds spanning across the globe. Now our judge just walking around, first North view of America them, he's seen them Europe. come in. Now he's this looking at them standing still, taking in their balance, origin, their shape. Really I think this looks like a very strong group, doesn't it, on, on first glance, Frank? From the tour, well, it's a very mixed group. Now uh, there's the little two, two sizes of the German spits there, the Klein and the Mittel. Which is nine centimetres between the two, isn't there, potentially? Very Beautiful, Japanese bright colours in the Japanese breeds, as in we saw in the Akita Inu and the Shiba there. Yes, they have a really interesting that case hunt looking really nice. Th those colours and the harness markings, beautiful. What a very nice Lars Apso, a grey one, very striking. And there's Frankie. More about him later. He looks uh, in good form tonight. The poodle's always the show people of this group, aren't they? <laughs> And as our judge Rodney Owen comes to the end of the line, can I ask Full you of concentration, you taking his first glance of them. Usually, if the shape is correct for the breed, that's a good indication that they're a very good breed type. Now, coming to view the first dog, the first hands-on examination, where the judge will look at the dog, put his hands on to feel their anatomy. Good shoulders, the bone, the rib cage, the, the rear hind angulation. Here we have our best of breed, Akita. Now, this is the largest breed in the utility group, originally bred as fighting dogs in Japan. 61 of them were here today, and this is a two-year-old bitch called Twinny who has taken top Akita last year. Some believe the dogs were originally bred for hunting wild boar, deer, and bear. Others believe they were bred So Akita should have a broad head, carried well forward on the move, and they're a spitz-type dog, aren't they, Frank? And, and this one, the... the the native of Japan, but it was developed in America. It was in its native Japan, it used to hunt bears and wild boar. Then went to America where they wanted a heavier type of dog, but keeping this plush, brightly colored coat. And that coat's really important, isn't it? So coarse out on the outer coat and then soft and dense, really protective in all conditions. And this one was top Akita in the breed last year in 2021. Very successful kennel here, isn't it? I think we've seen them best of breed in this ring a number of times. And com coming from Merseyside. Beautiful mover there. And such a young bitch as well, just two years old. And now we look to the table where we see the next of the utility breeds to be examined by Rodney Oldham. Very strong bone, striding out Jerry. well. Jeanette Metcalf, judge, an entry of 89 today, and selected number 8153, the bitch, as her best. And breed here breed. is the Boston Terrier, a real Yankee Doodle Boston dandy Terrier of a dog. As, as its name American suggests, Terrier. it was developed in Boston Republican in America, and at one stage you had to live in Boston before you could be a member of the Boston they are Terrier also Club. Well breed. These clever canines so these dogs should be muscular with performing. elegance. There were 89 of them shown today. And this is Eden, a three year old bitch who's come from Cardiff. And a young winner, this one became a champion just six months into the showing career. The Boston Terrier is one of the bull breeds, which means it's got bulldog in its ancestry. But there's also a degree of elegance in those longer legs. 
And the markings are important, aren't they, Frank? We call them Boston markings. This white collar, some white on the muzzle and the legs, it makes them very smart. And described as being that they should be sure-footed on the move. I think we can see that here, can't we? And they're great, great characters of dogs, yes. And they can also be very good at other disciplines, can't they? Agility, fly ball, if they turn their mind to it. And now we see before us the bulldog. Miss Sonia Davis was the judge today. And as usual at Crowley, Here we have our best of breed bulldog, unique in that it is shown dogs, facing the judge so the judge can really group. see that head and substance. Emerging These are dogs that are an iconic British breed used to symbolise the spirit of the country. They are originally bred for bull baiting and obviously when that became bulldogs illegal, the boob was regenerated when there was a new interest in showing. In they were bred for the sport of bull baiting, hideous to think of today. Thankfully, in 1835, the sport was banned, and soon the bulldog was crossed. Judge, just looking at the shape of the body, the substance, and the bone, getting the hands on examination. So this one, two-year-old dog called Carter, he's here from Spain and has won 14 cc's. He's here's obviously had a few trips over here. Here's, here's the top-winning bulldog in the country last year. He's done very well. They should have those really distinctive high-set rose ears, shouldn't they? We can see there. Of course, the bulldog breeders have done great work for improving the breed, getting rid of the exaggerations which came earlier in the century, where they were too heavy, lacking in neck. Now they're much healthier, better eyes, free from exaggeration. They should be broad, powerful and compact. I think this one sums that up perfectly. And strutting this stuff. Full of self-importance. They have quite a distinctive move, don't they? They have quite short, quick steps compared to some of the other breeds. Skimming the ground. That's right. And the next of our utility breeds to be seen by Rod Neal is the Canaan dog. The breed was judged today by Mo Pearson from Sweden. And uh, some from her entry, she something a little rarer here, the Canaan dog, the national breed of Israel. Its ancestry goes back to the Middle East, so it was originally a feral dog. And they retain that reservation with, with strangers, sometimes wary of being handled. But it was adopted by the Israel army to work as a mine detector, so a utilitarian dog now. This one really showing the longevity of the breed, nine years old, this dog called Moshi from Bristol. You see they're moving out well, level back deep chest and that really distinctive brush-like tail. They can come in any colour, but they have to have a dense weatherproof coat for working in all conditions. Sound movement is a breed without any exaggerations whatsoever. Fit for function. Just four of them here today. It's such a shame, isn't it? And this one very confident in its carriage, and that's all, not always the case, but this one is going very nicely in the big ring here. And now we see the Chow Chow. The breed was judged today by Mrs. Sheila A. Jakeman. And there was an entry of 54 Chows. And Sheila selected In this dog. Instantly recognisable, here we have the Chow the Chow. This one, Elvis. So Elvis is in the building this evening. Chow Not yet two years old. World, this is a dog Odyssey. hailing from Blackpool. Chow's and the Chow Chow dates back more than 2,000 years. It was used in China as a hunting years dog years and a guard years. dog. And Queen they Victoria owned one in Britain, own raising its profile own here. Own as we see here, ability. it has a very unique black tongue and gums. Throughout their long history, however, Chows did have numerous jobs. And Rodney, of course, has had many many champions in this breed, so we'll be looking at this with a specialist eye, looking at that padded muzzle, very important, those neat ears, a lot of bone and substance under that coat, and they have a rather unique stilted gait, not a lot of angulation in the rear legs, so that gives them, them a shorter stride. This one being sent forward by one of the country's breed specialists, Sheila Jakeman, famous for many famous chows. The tail should be carried high over the back, as we can see there. And they should have excellent endurance, despite being a substantial dog. Rather sad that in early China, it was an important food source and was used for meat, for its coat and skin, for clothing. So to talk about the all-rounder dog, that's not the sort of all-rounder we want these days. It is not, no. Thankfully, those days are well over. 54 of them here today, that's the Chow Chow. And next we see the Dalmatian. 
was a marvelous and there's the beautiful outline of the black spotted dalmatian the carriage dog of the regency period popularized by the upper classes who prized the dogs for their elegance and their decorative spotting as they run alongside their horse-drawn coaches they might also be able to deter the highwaymen robbers we're still not absolutely sure now, Dalmatians can come in black or liver spots. The spots are really important. They should be two to three centimetres in diameter. And as we see, when this dog sets off, they should never run out of energy. This is not a pet for sitting on the sofa. This is a pet if you want to get out and move, isn't it, Frank? They're wonderful. They love exercise. And it's good to judge them on the move, where they have to show their long stride, which is an economic action. They cover maximum ground with long strides. So it's very important that they have good shoulders, good hands, quarters to drive them along and they see this elegance in their carriage holding its shape wagging its tail this one very smart and look at that wagging tail it's lovely the occasion it is stepped at this so this is a three-year-old dog called theo here from yorkshire and owner says he's a real mommy's boy and now we see a fairly recent addition to the utility group the erasure they were judged today by bridget morton grimm the epitome of an unexaggerated breed here. This is the best of breed, Eurasia. Just 17 of them here today have many typical spitz features, so the wedge-shaped head, the erect ears, and the tail carried up over the back. The name literally means combination of European and Asian. ...to create a breed with the best qualities of the Chow Chow and the Wolf Spitz. The initial combination of it's a relatively modern breed and developed in Germany by Julius Whitfell, and he wanted he bred together the Chow Chow and the German Spitz with an input of Samoid blood. Here he, we have the result, the Eurasia, becoming very popular. Originally designed to be a sled dog, now principally seen in, as a household companion. And the coat really important here, isn't it, Frank? So it should be harsh and loose lying on the top coat, but a really thick undercoat designed to work out in all conditions. A protective double coat. All the spitz, spitz breeds have that. This is a four-year-old dog, Luca, from Essex. Apparently, he believes his sister is a Dachshund, which is rather sweet. <laughs> That's our best of breed. A brisk stride going round, holding its level top line and tail over the back. That's very correct. French Bulldogs were judged today by Mrs. Sina Thorne Andrews, an entry of 179 dogs. Now, here is the French Bulldog, the dog of the moment. The top registrations in the Kennel Club, it's even overtaken the popularity of the Labrador and the Golden Retriever. Why? Well, I'll tell you why. They're such a wonderful character. They're almost human in their intelligence. When a dwarf bulldog breed, known as the toy bulldog, was popular in some parts. Nottingham lace makers, who were threatened with redundancy during the Industrial Revolution, took them to France with them, taking basically a dwarf bulldog, and that's where the French bulldog developed from. Those large bat-like ears are a really key feature, aren't they, Frank? Uh, yes, and it gives them that clownish look about yes. them. They, they are wonderful characters. It's rather sad that in the pandemic, and commercial breeders have taken advantage of the popularity with some unscrupulous breeding. So it's very important to source where you're going to buy one if you're going to get a French Bulldog. This one, strutting his stuff. They're a sturdy, well-ribbed dogs, that lovely square head, padded muzzle, and those bat-like ears. This one, four-year-old dog called Otto. Uh, Jeff Corr is showing in the ring there, and he's a very experienced handler and exhibitor, isn't he, Frank? Yeah, uh, very, he's had best in show at clubs, handled be before. Now, look, we have the slight rise over the loin of the dog to a low-set tail, this broad chest, and really self-important on the move. This is a brindle. There are four colours in the breed, the fawn, the fawn pied and the black and white pied with the brindle. translates from German. Claire Andrew judged the breed today and from an entry of 40... Here we have what must surely be one of the oldest competitors making it through to a group judging. This is 12-year-old Jen, the German Spitz Klein. So we're going to see two varieties of German Spitz and as the name suggests, this is the smaller. They can stand up to 29 centimetres tall and gain popularity when Queen Victoria showed one at the very first Crufts, which was held in London. ...that we'll see later, and the smaller Klein. And it's remarkable, God, this at 12 years old, it's, I think six years ago, she won the utility group yes. of Crufts. How about that for longevity and says a lot about the soundness of the breed and the health of the breed. 
effortless and brisk action is what we're looking for here, holding the top line, and they should be happy with a confident disposition. Of course, it's the German Spitz, which is the ancestor and foundation of the Pomeranians, which we'll see later in the toy group. Yes. And very similar, but on an even smaller scale, aren't they? Would, the would you guess that dog was German 12 years old? You would never guess, would you? Eight, nine, Brilliant five, example seven. of a breed that's fit for function. And now we see the German Spitz Mittel, a larger version of the Klein that we've just seen. And here is the same, but in a bigger size, the Mittel Spitz. Now, it, the, this dog comes from the same kennel as the Klein dog, so they've had a great day winning both varieties. Uh, Gary Pierce and Dale Francis from Middlesbrough. So the, the middle's slightly more popular. There were three more of them than there were of the Klein here today. 43 entered. And this one is sable, which has a sort of fawn coat with black tips to the hair. Gives it this sable effect. And that rough around the neck is quite important, isn't it? It's kind of balanced out by the tail, which is carried on high. It's a typical Spitz feature. They, they can come in any colour. And so I've always found that when judging finish, uh, the German Spitz, these owners, they don't just have one. They're very collectible. They, you know, they have half a dozen because they're wonderful characters and live well together with other dogs. The coat should be profuse, but not the hiding anything. To the of the and this brisk action, and again, the level top line, very correct to show good balance, good anatomy, and the tail high over the back. Very alert looking with those sharp pricked ears. And the standard for the two varieties is the same, isn't it, apart from the size? They share the same standard, yes. Japanese Akita Inu. They were judged today by Paul Harding, and from an entry of 33, best to breed with this bitch, a breed now that has remained remarkably unchanged for centuries. This is the Japanese Akita Inu. And we've already seen the Akita, founded in Japan, and they were separated from the Akita in 2006. Now, the name literally means a large dog, and they were bred as hunting dogs. Again, those spitz-like features that we've seen earlier. Their reputation spread throughout the world in the 1920s. Thanks to a dog named the Japanese Pachiko. prized bright yeah, colours and markings in their dogs. This one, a beautiful plush coat, After gold and white, two, the what's American called the Urojiro markings, Japan. the white Before markings the down the chest, down the legs. And look at that lovely, neat brass, ears, cocked forward, American and this style. oriental yeah. expression yeah. in the, the eyes, from the almond-shaped eyes. Wonderful pigmentation, a beautiful expression. This another one showing longevity, won Best Bitch here at Crufts in 2019. A six-year-old bitch, this, called Romy, and from just down the road in the West Midlands. And, and this is the original size of the Akita. The, the ones we saw earlier, the ones that went to Germany, would, uh, went to America, were heavier and larger. But you can see the similarity. It's just ones obviously developed into a heavier, more substantial breed. So they should be slightly longer than high. Best of breed Large, well-balanced and sturdy. Having a little sneeze there. And now we see another Japanese breed, this time the Japanese Shiba Inu. Judged today by Belinda Roskell. And here's one with a lot of similarity, the Shiba Inu, which in Japanese means small dog. And it looks like a smaller version of the Akita. It originated in the mountainous areas of Japan and was used for hunting small game. It's alert, watchful, and again, the bright colors. Look at that lovely expression from the almond-shaped eyes. So there were 77 of them here today. So this one is a two-year-old dog Queen called Kai, and this is his first Devil big win. So a great day coming into the group ring today. So again, this one has those characteristic markings, doesn't it? The lighter patches and there's very class. specific places they're meant to be, isn't there, Frank? A absolutely, and they have to have brisk athletic movement. That's very important. They're light on their feet. Driving away well, the tail plumed over the back. There's a wonderful plushness to that coat. And this is a breed that almost became extinct after the First World War, wasn't there? And various uh, varieties within Japan were combined to produce the breed that we see here today. Bred to hunt small game birds.
This one moving out really nicely. And now on the table, we see Taking it all in stride, family. only two years old and, and done very few Japan. shows. This is the Japanese Spitz. Jean Sharp Bale judged the entry of 55 Japanese Spitz today. Here we see the wonderful contrast the between the bright white nine. coat and black pigment of the They're Japanese spits. They're believed to have originated when Samoyeds were crossed with white German black spits, black and, and the key feature really is that profuse white coat eyes. which should be standing off. They also the have Japanese a pointed muzzle and those lovely erect triangular ears we're seeing there today. Spitz-type dogs were found in a cargo shipment from Canada. At the time of the Tokyo earthquake. And this one is the and breed record holder. It's won an amazing 37 dog. challenge certificates. That you need three to become a champion. So how long has this been going well, on with a winning career? And called Romeo as well. So Romeo. obviously hoping everyone falls in love with him. Yes, I, <laughs> yes, I think he's sighed quite a few children as well. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, okay. Anyway, with, with this brisk action, he's in great form. Seven years old, so another one that's technically classed as a veteran in dog showing like years. Should be alert, intelligent, bold and lively. We saw the Samoid in the groups yesterday. Here we have one of its descendants in a miniaturized form. And from there, a well-plumed the tail spits carried up over the back, as we see with all of the Spitz breed breeds. Was recognized by the Kennel Club in 1977. That's the best of breed Japanese Spitz 9139. And the next of our utility utility breeds we see the Kazon. Judged today by now Steve doesn't Lama, this look a picture at yep, those beautiful line. cream and grey markings of the Kizond, the, the Dutch barge dog developed by the Dutch politician Kees de Geisler who was leader of the Dutch Patriot this Party so it became an emblem for the political party. And typical harness markings was used as a watchdog or on barges in Holland. This one, two-year-old Yoko, over from Italy. Apparently very joyful and powerful, is how it's described. When the, when the political party fell out of favour, the breed almost was, was lost. However, they developed it into a barge dog. It was used on the barges to be a guard dog and occasionally to keep down the vermin. And one of the things I love about the breed is these little spectacle markings they're called, aren't they? Literally from the corner of the eye across to by the ear. Looks like he's got his glasses on. And the, those shadings over the shoulder, they're known as harness markings. This is a beautiful spit shape, and this has really taken my eye. He's come all the way from Italy, I think, yes, today to win. Yes, he has, yeah. I think really smart little dog there. That large ruff around the neck. The tail should also be well feathered. They're very intelligent, these dogs. The judge sending them round the here. He's looking at the top line and profile, the length of stride. This is a brisk striding dog. All the spits are brisk strides. They're not big striding dogs. There you are. Beautiful picture. Lovely expression. That's full of qualities. This is joined from the ranks of, from the gun dog, dog, gun dog group in 2014. Here we have our best of breed, Quaker Honje. This one, six year old Zori from just down the road in Staffordshire. There were 31 of them here today. Now, interestingly, this breed was originally placed in the gun dog group, but it was moved to the utility group as owners said it didn't actually like working alongside guns and didn't like the noise. They're a Dutch breed and they were used by hunters to lure ducks into nets. Or cages with traps at the end. And the typical colour is this orange and white with those black earrings, shadings on the ears. That's a prized breed feature. Rather appropriately, the orange markings for the House of Orange, the ruling Holland, the, yes. Yes, the ruling dynasty in Holland. And, uh, and that white plume tail was what they used to lure the ducks, wasn't it? It's it was, really important. It was the wagging tail which kept the ducks interested, then they were led down the, down the canals towards the traps. And as you say, they work without guns. So that's why they, they moved from the Gundog group when they first came to this country. Movement, movement should be flowing and springy. And a self-confident air, which I think, oh, a little shake there. I think that's what we're seeing. Shaking the earrings, obviously, yes. yes. Yeah. <laughs> and now we see the Laza Hapso. This is Anne Pickburn. Judge the breed today and with another now a beautiful picture of the Lars Apso on the table there. This is a breed which comes from Tibet, where they were kept as companions for monks in their isolated monasteries. They were credited with spiritual powers, and it was thought that it brought good luck to the owner. 
many centuries. He was kept by Tibetan monks in their isolated... I'm sure the owner is hoping that this is going to bring some good luck today. This is a six-year-old dog called Dylan from Essex, and they should be heavily but not excessively coated. So we see as the dog moves, the hair should move away from the eyes so that they can see. The vision shouldn't be impeded. The breed was brought into the UK by British Embassy officials returning home from the country. They were bred to survive extreme climates, so the coat was protective coat for the cold winters. Now, free and jaunty is how we're describing the movement, and I would say slightly aloof looking at this one, Frank, do you agree? <laughs> it, it, it's got that aloof quality, which yes, is very yeah. important in the breed, but the lovely level top line, the tail carried high, this is a beautiful dog. And closely related to the Tibetan Terrier, which we will see later, and very similar characteristics, aren't there, between the two? and shown together so in the early days of the breed. And this grey colour, is that quite unusual? I haven't seen that many, or...? Well, no, it's, you know, we, they come in any colour. The gold was at once time the favoured the favoured colour. Now yes. we've got the grey and the party colours. Now, the next dog on the table is the miniature Schnauzer. Kevin Durso was our breed judge here today at Crofts. And from an entry of 104... Here we have that wonderful beard, moustache and eyebrows of the miniature Schnauzer. The name literally means harsh beard, and it's the smallest of the historic Schnauzer breeds, dating back to the 14th century. They're pepper and salt in colour, and this one is a two-year-old dog called Raymond, who's here from Southampton. Some say that the Affen Pincher from the toy group and the Schnauzer... This is a very smart dog, the salt and pepper colour, those banded grey hairs... Long, powerful foreface, a cobby body. They may look a little bit like terriers, but they're much sturdier, more substance than a terrier. They want some fore chest and big ribs. This one looking very good. And even though they are miniature version of the Schnauzer, there should be no reduction in spirit, should there? These dogs are full of character. And of course, to get a dog looking like this, this is trimmed to perfection by finger and thumb plucking to keep the coat hard. Often the people who have them at home as pets will take them to their trimming parlours and they'll be clipped, which changes the texture. For the show ring, we want a trimmed coat which is hard and wiry to the touch. And Lucy Dixon here showing in the ring started off as a junior handler because I used to compete with her when I was younger, so very experienced handler. And been very successful as a breeder. Clever girl. So we're looking for vigorous and balanced movement, good reach and drive. So we're, what we're saying there is that we drive from the rear legs and reach there. You can see forward with the front legs. And you can see that it looks like a chunky little number, which is very correct for <laughs> the, the mini. <laughs> it sounds like me. A chunky little number, <laughs> yes. No, I'm, I was thinking more of myself, actually, oh, okay. Laura. Yes, OK. dogs for our judge today, Mr Frank Kane. Well, I had the pleasure of judging 99 miniature poodles today, and this is the dog who was best of breed. He was chased home, he didn't have an easy ride, but a, a lovely dog. He's got great presence and great character. The and it's his seventh birthday today. Now, this dog has won reserve best in show at Crufts in 2020 and 2017. So can he go one better today, Frank? Do you think he's looking on top form? Well, he, he is looking very well. The, you know, poodles were bred in Germany. They were originally water dogs, but that now they've, they've, they've led themselves to the show ring. They're the great showman, and this dog is an example of that. So we're looking for sound, free, and light movement, aren't we? And those rear end should really be driving power Frankie forward. The, the poodle should be a square dog. He's squarely built with this long, clean, chiseled head, a long foreface, which was, of course, ideal for retrieving ducks, which he was bred to do. And, of course, the, the plume tail, carried high, gives him that degree of elegance and confidence. All poodles have the wool coats that we... That Such a showman there. ...regular clipping and grooming. Looks in great muscular condition. Great. Shown there on a lovely loose lead, which is nice to see. The movement is light and effortless and striding out cleanly. The, the ultimate show dogs, the poodles, the as we'll see with the two following him, yes. The standard poodle. They were judged today by Karen Winwood. Here we have the largest of our poodle varieties, this the standard poodle. This one is Jake, a three-year-old dog from Gloucester. Now, they originated in Germany, used to retrieve ducks. And the trim, now, it's actually practical. It allows the hindquarters to be free to retrieve the ducks, propel them through the water, and the tail and joints are protected from the cold by those areas of longer feathering. 
Although today's poodles... Although he, he lives in England now, he is bred in Sweden by the famous Huffish Kennel. They've had great success. And this came over to the country last year and has had a couple of group wins and the best in show win. So he's had a great career for his owner, Philip Langdon, here. Top standard poodle of last year. A job that requires jumping in the water to fetch game The head really important, isn't it, Frank? So long, fine, a really strong foreface. Yeah, and a, a chisel foreface to give them this look of quality and an arm and shaped eye, which gives them that poodly look. Now, if you are handling a standard poodle, you need to be able to move, don't you? <laughs> as, as you see, and this one is, is really going well, stepping out. Look at that head carriage, the long, elegant neck. They're highly intelligent, though, aren't they? Some people look at them and think these are, oh, you know, this is a show dog, but they are very versatile. They don't have to be shown in this well, trim, do they? We've seen them so in, in obedience yes. wins and also in, a, uh, in uh, agility, too. They, they, they love to be engaged in an activity. Two really strong poodles so far here. And now the smallest of the three poodle varieties. This is the toy poodle. Judged today by now, the smallest of the sizes we have in this country, it's the Toy Poodle. And this one, spectacular for its apricot coat. We don't often see them so much in the show ring, these apricots, this bright orange coat. The judge, look at the dentition there, that's very important. Looking at that long, fine foreface. And in every respect, including in his mind, He's a standard poodle so the toy poodles are under 28 centimetres tall. There were 72 of them here the today. This one is a dog called Waffle, Club, and he's from Blackpool. From and he's won best in show at a number of championship shows. And his owners describe him as a complete clown. And so hopefully he won't do anything naughty again, here. Well, I think <laughs> they are a, a clownish breed. Just look at the elegance and quality in that almond-shaped eye, dark, dark eye, giving this lovely expression. Beautiful. And the hairband that we see there, that's allowed, isn't it, in poodles, yes, to keep yes, it out of the eyes? It's eye. a top knot to keep it out of the yes. eyes. The trimming should not sure, be exaggerated. This mane of hair at the front, you mentioned the functional trim, Laura. The mane of hair at the front was to give buoyancy in the water. And, of course, the coat is not soft, it's a wiry coat. Now, look at this for self-importance. Isn't that, isn't that marvellous? The crowd are loving this. And he's got this, he's got this wonderful name, Afterglow Agent Orange. He's, he's, he sounds like a little spy, doesn't he? Yes? So... I like Waffle. What a wonderful, name. wonderful picture. Tom Isherwood handling. Really light, free on the move there, and so much drive. Look at that. And the crowd love him, obviously. They see his personality here, don't they? He's not intimidated by the standard, <laughs> is he? Look at him. He's like, look at me go. And now we see the skipper key, judged today by Mrs. Melanie Reed Pack. And from an entry of 37, Melanie selected this bitch, 9827, to be best of breed. This little breed was developed to keep Here we have another of the spitz type market. breeds. This is and the skipper key. Now the name the literally job. translates as little skipper or skipper little boatman, and they were used to keep down vermin on Belgian barges. Boatman. This one the is three year old Zeta here from barge. Shropshire and has previously won at championship in shows. Century, the Flemish held Sunday beauty contests for dogs and the skipper keys competed. And what's unusual about the breed is that they almost look in profile like a caped highwayman, that cape of hair over the neck and shoulders, those culottes at the end. Uh, and this one is a, we usually see them winning, the, the black one, this is a coloured one, cream or wheaten. So it's a rarity for the, them to get to this level. A blonde firecracker is how the owner has described, very, <laughs> described nice her. But they are feisty, they're noisy and full of spirit, yes. No, so that coat is really dense, isn't it, and harsh, helping to give yeah, them uh, it, waterproof qualities. It lies close on the body, oh, but longer the over the neck and shoulders, the culottes on the back the legs. And I've got to say, I did a double take when it wasn't black, because you're so used to seeing them in black, aren't you? It's nice to see something different. Now, the standard schnapps, we saw the miniature earlier. This is the, the prime variety, the first variety. All the same characteristics. The word schnauzer means whiskered snout. And it used to be a farm dog to keep down vermin, sometimes herding, and a very good guard dog. The breed was the all round farm dog known for chasing. So, this one, a four year old Fizzy, the dog, and apparently the name sums him up, so we should be able to see some energy on the move from this one. They're sturdily built, aren't they, and robust. 
That's Lots of substance and good three. bone and a good chest. They should be, as we say, chunky little numbers. Yes, it's just a bit bigger. Yes. So two of the schnauzers are in the utility group, and then we have the giant schnauzer, which was here in the working group. They were judged on today day one. by Mr. Derek Smith. This our pay entry was 39, and Derek selected this bitch number nine. And here's the distinct outline of the Sar Pei. Its origins are in China with some common ancestry with the Chow Chow and a bit of Mastiff in input. Used as a hunting dog in the early days, a herder and a guard dog, and sadly, sometimes used as a fighting dog, where its thick skin and bristly coat make, made it a difficult opponent. As a fighting dog and a hunter. But a lot of work has been done, hasn't it, by breeders, Frank, to reduce the excessiveness of the, of the coat. Now, we, you know, we see a little bit of wrinkle behind the withers. That when the first ones came from America, they were over-wrinkled, and it caused great skin problems, and also problems with the eyes, where they were, it's impacting on the vision and on the eyes. Breeders have worked hard to make it a much, much healthier, less exaggerated breed. And this one, hardly a wrinkle, it's allowed a little bit behind the withers, a few fine wrinkles on the head, and a little bit at the root of the tail. So this is free from exaggeration, moving out very nicely. That padded muzzle and neat triangular ears. There were 128 Shih Tzus here today, and this one is our best of breed winner. They should be small but sturdy dog, believed to have originated in China, but with ancestry in the Tibetan breeds that we'll see later today. Originally shown in the UK alongside the Lasso Apso, they were later split into two breeds. This one is three-year-old Ollie, a dog from West Sussex. The most likely a product of crossbreeding. Now, this is a breed which should be sturdy under the coat. It's got solid bone, good rib cage, and they should move with arrogance. They should hold their head up and the tail over the back, as this one's doing. And the hair grows upwards, doesn't it, on the muzzle, which gives a chrysanthemum like effect to the head. That's right. And the coat should be hard, not soft. It's a, it's a hard coat, hard to the touch. And they should really kick back their legs to show the, their pads when they're moving as a sign of a great self importance on the move. <laughs> Originally used as companions and watchdogs. Mr. Ian Miller judged the entry of 130 Tibetan Spaniels here at Crufts today. Now the Tibetan Spaniel being examined on the table, favoured by Tibetan monks and often found alongside the Lhasa in the, in the monasteries. Shared the same prestige and the same magical qualities accredited them. You could never buy a Tibetan Spaniel. You had to be, they were given only to favoured friends. It was a great honour to receive a Tibetan Spaniel. They certainly earned their key. So this one five-year-old dog called Magnus, quite a big winner, won at the Yukonuba Champion Stakes recently. And he was the second top dog in the country last year. So he, and that's, you know, for a Tibetan Spaniel, they're an unexaggerated, not particularly flashy breed. He's very correct for breed type, which it's not all about flash and dash. It's about the breed standard and being correct. This is a very long-lived breed, a little padded muzzle, Neat lift to the ears, to good, good length of leg. There should be some daylight one underneath zero, them. One, Quick moving, they should be. Tail carried high, as so many of these breeds are. And that coat is more silky textured, isn't it, than the breeds that we've seen before. And again, they were, they were brought to the UK by um, missionaries coming home from Tibet. They there are 156 Tibetan Terriers here today, and this is four-year-old dog Dat, our best of breed winner. They're a close relation of the Lasso Apso, and despite the name, they're not a terrier. They were used as a herding and guard dog for sheep, brought to the UK from Tibet in the 1920s by missionaries who've been working there. Comes from a very famous kennel, the Iraqi kennels, who've had countless champions and had best in show at Crufts one year. His boundless energy and by Iraqi fabulous Willie, the name was all. I remember. You can't forget, can you? So they should be a strong, muscular, compact body, and moving it should be smooth and effortless. Again, that tail carried up over the back. And again, they were bred in monasteries and devoted to their owners, becoming one-man dogs, and they were excellent as watchdogs. And Tibet has harsh conditions, so that coat, again, has a purpose. It's a double coat, and it's designed to protect them.
And in their native Tibet, to... they, were, they, they grew heavy coats in the winter. In the summer, they were clipped along with the sheep and their coats spun to, to make the clothes for the monks. Now, coming from the import classes today, which is at classes for breeds which are just developing their gene pool and their population in the country, we have this very rare breed, the Jolowit Squintly, previously known as the Mexican hairless dog. Now, how does it get its name? Jol was the Aztec god of deformed things. It's rather a, a sad reason, but it's hairless, it's warm to the touch, and it's uh, very unique. It was thought that it has um, curative powers for asthma, for rheumatism, and for migraines, and its hot skin provides comfort against the cold. Three sizes of them, this is the, the middle size, we have them a larger, which were the, the hunting dogs, the of the and the football smaller football ones, which are the, in the toy Luana. category, the, the free-moving, you can see the shininess, the, the, you can use oil in the coat to keep the skin supple. So that concludes the preliminary examination of all the 27 individual best of breed So our judge has had a look at the best of breed winners. Who is he going to choose for his shortlist? And our judge, Rodney Oldham, will now take another last look at all of these fabulous best of breed winners before he makes his shortlist of finalists. Now the judge just walking around, reminding Rodney himself Oldham of what he's seen and felt on hands-on examination. This is a thinking time for the judge winners. because he has to whittle them down to the last eight dogs for the runoff to be winner of the utility group. And some really strong competitors here, aren't there? Obviously, Frankie probably has your eye, but there's the K's hands well, looking beautiful, the Akita. But the, the, the poodles are always high quality and great show, show dogs in the group, and they take some beating, but there's other very good dogs here. Difficult decision, but our judge so will now select a round eight line. dogs and take another look, move them again. Move so, where's he going to go? Slow the walk down the line, going back over. It's, this is where details make the difference. You know, they should all be pretty good to get to this level. Yes, yeah. You're looking for the dog with the extra special, the extra quality, the extra presence on the move. Oh, the oh, chow chow, 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 chow. A, spe a specialist there. choice, that's good. And the Dalmatian, and the 12-year-old the, the Oh, fantastic, I'm delighted yes. that. And the Japanese Spitz comes in. The Japanese Spitz. Now, he's coming towards the Poodles. Oh, oh, the, the, oh no. The, mini oh, no. the yes. miniatures yeah, call forward. You, there you go. The and the toy. And the so poodle. there you are. Frankie and Waffle have made it Frankie together here. Frankie and Waffle, yeah. great name. And the Sarpe comes in, the and the Tibetan Spaniel. The Tibetan there. Spaniel. That concludes the short list. Eight of them. That's a, a tough lineup for them, yes. Can I ask you to show your appreciation no. and congratulate the other utility How wonderful. as they leave the ring? And some big winners there, Frank, aren't there? Some, some dogs that we've 20, seen to perform really yes. well earlier in the year. And, you know, Rodney, as a chow person, to get that chow out there, it obviously likes it very much, yes? Yes, because you're always extra critical of your own breed, aren't you? You can't help it. We've got the smooth coat of the Dalmatian, the profuse coat of the Poodles, and the Japanese Spitz and the Chow. Some instantly recognisable breeds there. Now, he's giving them instructions of how he wants to move. We'll see the pattern in a moment. So here we have and Elvis, a 23-month-old dog. The Chow Chow from Lancashire. And this was his third CC, so becoming a champion today. And we see that, that absolutely breed-specific action, this sort of cycling movement of the back legs, a stilted gait. But this won't be a stilted gait. This will be a far-reaching, <laughs> elegant stride on this black-spotted Dalmatian. So this is Theo three-year-old Dalmatian dog. Yes, it's a long walk around. Just about to start. The handler so just getting him collected before and she sets off, and there he goes. Against the all odds, he's called. He's called. So, so will, he, uh, will he pull off the odds tonight? I'll see. Here from Yorkshire today. And it's been a long day for these dogs, but this Dalmatian it could go all day and, and night. Here's the Dalmatian. Eight, five, eight, nine. 
really powering their drive and reach. So here we have the and German Spitz Klein. This is that 12-year-old bitch Klein. called Jen. Here from Middlesbrough. And uh, the one of the partners, Dale Francis Handling. It's amazing, 12 years and six years on since she won the group here. So she that's do it again. What a career, eh? She must be nearly ready for retirement, but she looks as though she's enjoying every moment, eh? Not looking her age. A little bit of grey, perhaps, just around the eyes, but not looking her age. The German Spitz Klein. And now moving is the Japanese And another Spitz. smart mover, the Set Japanese the Spitz here. And another veteran, this one. This so this is, is seven-year-old Romeo one, from nine. just down the road in Telford, the breed record holder with 37 challenge certificates. Now, you only need three, three to be a champion, just to give you some perspective. Spitz. Very accurate in its movement. This dog's won two best of breed awards for me in its career. Now, here we have... Frankie put through today oh, by our very own Frank oh. Kane Best and this dog has won reserve best of show here at Crufts in Number 2020 nine, and 2017 seven, owned by Melanie nine, Harwood can he go one 99. better on his seventh birthday oh, what, what a treat it? today well it's a, a big ask isn't it really in this company but she's such a showman absolutely best of three, never Poodle. stops nine, five, two, one. real carriage perfect top line perfect tail carriage and here's now this waffle. The little, Look. Toy the little I, I think toy poodle, two-year-old dog from Blackpool. I think it was this if it was on the clapometer, this would be it the would, winner. It? But yes. it's not on the clapometer, <laughs> yes. And that coat, we have to say, the, the grooming of the poodles, they do take some time, don't they, to yep. get them looking the like this. Poodles. Listen to the I'm crowd. Oh, Nick. <laughs> Look at that. And, and the more they cheer, the, the more, more he likes it, yes. He knows he's here to win. Look at him. Here we have the no, Sarpe, this one four-year-old Crumbs here from Milton Keynes and has won 15 cc so far in Korea. Again, striding out nicely. A really nice, unexaggerated example it's, it's there, a, isn't it, Frank? It's a fairly short, hard coat. Around the ring goes the off. tail Best just high. curved over the back nine, there. Nine, this should zero. be a rise in the top line. It's not a completely level top line. It rises towards the tail set, so it's a little higher at the tail than it is at the withers. And the, last of and the final of our shortlist, this is a Tibetan Spaniel, five-year-old Magnus here from Yorkshire, so another Yorkshire one. This is a bitch, number 10166. And this another big winner. And they tell me that this is to be his retirement show today. Oh, yeah. so let's see if he can go out He's on had a high. great, great career. And Around she goes. Look at that expression, the little smiling yep. expression, taking his time. This is a really, really strong final eight for our judge. So with all eight of our now, they're all back in place. This isn't a decision you want to regret, is it? So he's going to take his time, enjoy the moment. How will he be feeling, Frank? Well, he'll be wanting to get it right. He'll want to be sure of his the four top dogs. Get them in the right you order. To compete the best in when you need to stand back and he's doing just that, which of the four I want and in which order. Where's the handshake going to go? The boards are in. So he's he's, he's his checking. Decision, I think. The winner of the utility and the winner is... 2022. Oh, it's going to be that miniature! Oh, the, the, the toy poodle! poodle. The toy oh, sorry, the toy one. poodle. The toy poodle has won. No, no waffle there, he's won it. It's yes. waffle, two-year-old yes. dog from Blackpool. Handled in the ring by Tom Isherwood. And the chow-chow. Oh, the chow-chow. Chow chow. Group two, that's Elvis. And, that, that, and what lovely character that dog has. Absolutely wonderful temperament. And utility group three. Dalmatian. The Dalmatian. Group three. Eight, five, eight, nine. And who's going to get the fourth spot? And utility group four. Is. Frank. Oh, it's yes, Frankie. They are. Looking nine, really five, well today. It's a, a wonderful end to the day for him for his birthday treat. Yes. And look, coming over to congratulate the uh, the toy. To That's lovely. Great success. sportsmanship uh, there. All living in Lancashire, the poodle people here. That's Tom I and Melanie wait from Clitheroe in Lancashire. Owner, Tom from near Blackpool. This gorgeous toy, toy poodle. Really popular win. I know, Tom. This is called Waffle. Yeah, that's absolutely right. Yeah. Fantastic name. What a super performance. Tell us a little bit more about Waffle. Um, 
he's just a super little toy poodle. You know, he's amazing for his collar and an amazing toy poodle. And he just loves it and he's, I'm, well, I'm gobsmacked, so. I'm really curious, how did this name come about? Um, he's actually named by our best friends, um, two little girls, Pippa and Phoebe, uh, uh, Pippa and Ruby, who um, own his mother, so they named him. So when he was a little puppy, so. Oh, that's fantastic. Kind of special for them as well. Well, that's absolutely lovely. Well, many congratulations. Thank we'll you very see much. you here again tomorrow night. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for one of my favourites, the Toy Poodle. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's an enormous pleasure to ask Gavin Robertson from the Trust Committee to escort Mrs. Wendy Stretfield of the famous Leander Kennel, who herself has owned a Crufts Best in Show winner the ring to present the award. And the trophy coming to be presented by Wendy Stretfield, herself a, a standard poodle and toy poodle breed of the past, and she did have a, a Crofts Best in Show winner. Um, so, well, she'll be very pleased to see her little toy poodle winning. Now, she had some beautiful dogs herself. Now retired from showing, but obviously very pleased to be here. Second place going to the Chow. Now. Really strong line up there. <laughs> Just look at the character and the personality in that toy poodle. I love that toy poodle. And, and, and He's going to be hard to beat tomorrow, I think, especially if the uh, the crowd follow him here. Well. <laughs> oh, thank you. I think you can still buy tickets for Cross Best in Show if you would like to be here tomorrow and see how Waffle performs. And there's Frankie and another, so she'll be very pleased to see another poodle. A real dog lover and a real poodle lover. So what a nice, nice presentation there. As I say, Laura, this is a place where every dog lover should come once to see the spectacle of best in show.